Welcome to Bite Size Bios. This is meant to be a mini-sode that will accompany HDTH. Every week, I will pick a person from history and dive into their lives. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Bios BSB. This week, we are talking about Caitlyn Jenner and Bruce Jenner before she was Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, it's going to be episode number 28, bringing it to you guys. Last week, we learned about pirates, talking all about pirates. I learned a lot. We talked about Blackbeard, uh, Captain Morgan. We even talked about Vikings, because in my opinion, Vikings are definitely pirates. Like as I said in the last episode, they just get called something else. They're still pirates in my book. Um, learned Blackbeard's name, Edward, more than likely. I'm not sure about the last name. Teach could not be Teach, but... Um, and that he was basically the prince of the seas with his ribbons and his silk colored, you know, his coats that were all silk and soft and all that beautiful stuff. But one thing we didn't cover, a number of things uh, that we covered, we covered so much stuff, but we didn't get to uh, the pirate flag, right? The skull and crossbones, what is generally called the Jolly Roger. And that actually wasn't in use for as much as people think it was. Um, it's a relatively recent invention as far as like, piracy goes it's only been around for about three or four hundred years as in as we talked about pirates have been around for a couple thousand years probably at least uh pretty much as long as there was somebody out in the seas with some with some good stuff the pirates were out there were out there trying to take it they're still doing it to this day but the jolly roger is the traditional name for the flags flown to, to identify a pirate ship um this is like i said mainly during the golden age of piracy which we talked about in the last episode and it generally has these skull and crossbones a symbol on a black flag that was used Really starting around, I guess, the 1710s. A um, number of captains, pirate captains used them. Uh, Edward England, John Taylor, Black Sam Bellamy. Um, it went on to become the most kind of commonly used pirate flag during the 1700s. Other designs were also used, and that's pretty wild. If you look up pirate flags, there are so many. I know when I, when we, because when, when we say Jolly Rogers, we're thinking of the classic, like there's a skull, there's two bones below it that are crossed. There's ones that are either like either that on a different color background, like green or red or something like that, or there's like full on like a whole skeleton in some cases. Like they just they went they, it runs the gambit when it comes to what is actually a pirate um, skull and crossbones flag. But the first time the term Jolly Roger was actually referenced, uh, really like in, in in pop culture, was in Charles Johnson's the General History of Pirates, and that's pirates spelled with a Y, P Y R A T E S, and that was in 1724. There's a number of different, I guess, people aren't sure where they actually where they got the term J the Jolly Rogers uh, or Jolly Rogers. So there, there, there's one option that says it comes from a French term, Jolly Rouge, which means pretty red um, in reference to the the red version that the French would fly, uh, which was sometimes a tribute to the blood and the violence that was then yet to come, which is pretty, pretty wild. It's that's that's violent, but it sounds so cool. But it was, evident, it was evidently flown by a, by a large, you know, a, a lot of different types of pirates from all over the world would kind of come to find this flag to be, um, I guess, represent them. They felt that it, it, it explained them. It's this, this, this flag is, you know, this is, this is who I am. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for like the actual flag. What I found was actually cool was that in the 1900s, when the British Navy started um, using submarines, they actually adopted the pirate flag as well. And that would become, I think, still a part of their kind of, not unwritten rules, but like, um, they 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 did it. I think basically because I think they were they were called pirates by another. Um, let's see, I think I have it here. Oh, the thing, yeah, this is because there was an admiral when the, when they first started the subs. There was an admiral, I think, named Admiral Arthur Wilson, who I guess they were against the idea of right, using subs and and they thought that using submarines was underhanded and wasn't English. Um, that he would convince the British admiralty to have the crews of the enemy submarines captured during wartime and hanged as pirates. So that was like the idea that if you get, if you want to see us, you know, you're going to cause pirates, you're going to, we're going to, we're going to run that pirate flag. And so they still, they, they did it for years. They stopped for a little while and brought it back in World War II. Um, they would even have red pirate flags too. So it just kind of explains if you ever see one, that's kind of what that is. And yeah, I mean, even, even up until the end of the 2000s, there's at least, I think 20, 15 to 20 different uh, vessels in the Royal Navy submarine class that have uh, actual like a, a, a Jolly Rogers flying. I think that's true. I don't want to be wrong, um, but if I am, let me know. I guess that's about it for the pirate stuff. I, I wanted to make sure I got that, and I realized that I didn't. That's what I didn't get the flag in there when we talked about it last time. I, thought, I think that that's one of the more important things um, about the idea of the generic pirate is like the flag. The last thing I wanted to mention was some of my favorite pirate movies. Since we're on it, I mean that's I, 
played a little bit of the Pirates of the Caribbean at the beginning of the last episode. That's definitely one of my one of my favorite pirate movies. Um, Captain Phillips, great pirate movie. It's a modern captain movie. You know, look at me, look at me. I'm the captain now. Yeah, that 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 whole thing. Um, and what I thought about even another one that's like I I didn't think about it as a captain as a as a pirate movie, but it's you know Peter Pan, total total pirate movie. You know, um, yeah. But then we'll get on to the other housekeeping of the show. Uh, what am I watching? I just watched Champions on Peacock, and it is. They make a lot of these movies. They made them before where like some guy who's really good at whatever sport he does. I think Martin Lawrence did one years ago. Um, I think what Keanu Reeves did the same thing with Hardball, where that you know it's like they bring him oh the ragtag group of guys and they're like, can they be any good? And we see if they are. It's pretty much that same kind of like vehicle, but it's it's Woody Harrelson starring in it this time. These guys are actually disabled. Uh, they have real disabled people that are playing, which makes it actually pretty cool. It's actually it's 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 really funny. Um, if you like movies like The Ringer and stuff like that, you'll definitely love this. Uh, he plays a basketball coach who gets fired from his pro job and gets a DUI. In exchange for jail time, he has to coach a group of disabled kids for three months, and they try to make it to the championship. Spoiler alert: they do. What am I listening to? Uh, I'm back on my back on my audiobook kick. Like I said, um, I'm listening to Poverty by America, who is uh, it's written by a man named Matthew Desmond. It's a good book. It's a, I'm about halfway through it. It's about you know the idea of how poverty in America is a problem and also pre- preventable. Um, and the people who are in power, as well as the middle class, he kind of points the finger and says, you know, we are, um, we're a part of it. He, he talks about a lot, of, a lot of different things. He talks about the whole, like the whole gig economy, um, and how that's contributing to poverty for people because there's no accountability on the on the side of, I guess, like the like the Ubers and the, and the DoorDashes for the people who are who they're employing. There's no, they're not actually employees, and it's they don't get the same rights. And but we all benefit from the fact that we can just call or you know have something delivered to our house for a really fraction of the price because there's no overhead for these companies all this different stuff he talks about you know just like real poverty like poverty like on the streets poverty um one thing he said that really hit home with me though he made an interesting um comment where he said the idea of being broke and with no place to live is more looked down on than having mental health problems like he said in this and i believe it to be true that someone is more likely to tell you that they have mental issues than to tell you that they have money issues you know and it made me look at society from a different perspective because i feel like that's actually true i feel like People are much more likely to say, you know, I'm having problems with my head and saying that they're broke, you know, because you look and it's it shouldn't be. But that's what he said is another stigma that goes with it. That is just another way that America just perpetuates poverty. It's a pretty good book. Um, definitely check it out. Like I said, Poverty by America, uh, written by Matthew Desmond. And that's pretty much it. We don't have too much more before we get to the episode. Uh, as always, seven days a week, you can find out how things happen over at HTTHappen.com. Uh, we have all the extras from the episode, work cited videos and all that good stuff. Uh, there's a blog over there as well. Uh, the socials are the same thing at HTT Happen. That's Twitter and Instagram. Um, I don't think there's much else to say before we get to the episode. So, without further ado, as we're going to do, here it is. Are you a woman? Um, yes, for all intents and purposes, I am a woman. And that's very hard for Bruce Jenner to say. Because why? I don't want to disappoint people. Bruce lives a lie. She is not a lie. Okay, so Caitlyn Jenner, uh, Bruce Jenner, whatever you want to call, however you feel about who they are, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about their life today. Uh, we're gonna start by calling them a, a he, I guess. And I want to start off by saying I'm not trying to offend anybody. It's more just how to get this narrative. Um, I guess, right? I don't know, but we're going to start with William Bruce Jenner, uh, who was born on October 28, 1949 in Mount Kisco, New York. Uh, his parents were Esther Ruth, a solid name, and William Hugh, also a solid name, William Hugh Jenner. Um, he was an arborist who was from Canada, so he has Canadian roots. Um, Jenner is of English, Scottish, Irish, Dutch, and Welsh descent. And they have a younger brother named Bert who was killed in a car accident in Cannes, Connecticut in like the 70s, like 76, uh, like right after Jenner got really successful with, uh, with the Olympic Games. I believe. Jenner is also dyslexic. Uh, so Bruce Jenner went to high school at Sleepy in Swirl in Sleepy Hollow, New York, at Sleepy Hollow High School. That's just fun. I didn't, I didn't know there was a Sleepy Hollow, New York. I don't know where else I thought there were Sleepy Hollows, but I wasn't expecting that. 
Uh, but only for the first couple of years did Jenner go there. Then they went to Newtown High School in Newtown, Connecticut. Once again, the city and the school named the same thing. Um, they would graduate in 1968 and then earn a football scholarship to Graceland College, which is now called Graceland University in Lamoni, Iowa. Uh, they had to stop because Jenner got uh, a, a knee injury. Uh, just couldn't keep playing. But while he was there at uh, at Graceland College, is it Graceland College? Uh, basically, he would um, the track coach would see his I guess potential and say, "Hey, well, maybe you can't play football. Maybe you can do a little running." You know, and he encouraged him to start doing decathlons. And he actually debuted as a decathlete in 1970 in the Drake Relays in Des Moines, Iowa. He finished fifth in that actual race. Uh, he graduated from Graceland in 1973 with a degree in PE, phys ed. That's physical education for all you out there. And after graduating, he married a girlfriend named Christy Crownover. Loving the, alliter loving the alliteration. Christy Crownover. And they moved to San Jose, California. Crownover did most of the breadwinning in that family for a while. She was a flight attendant for United Airlines. And this was because Jenner was training for his, uh, you know, decathlon, all his running. And during that time, he was only making about $9,000 a year. You know, it's, it's, it's actually really sad. And I think we would probably have, I don't know if that's true or not, we would probably have more Olympians if it, if it paid better. And I know, I know it pays pretty good now. But even still, unless until you become like, you know, the big ones and most people don't unless you're like a michael phelps or a gabby douglas or whatever these people's names are um you know or ryan lochte you're not making big bucks so it's it's hard to you know stay in it you really have to do it for the love and as i was kind of just alluding to um and this is the era before professional athletes were allowed to compete in olympic sports so all these guys were, were, were amateurs um the difference i guess in what kind of made a difference in the, in the athletic competition was that the soviet athletes were actually state-sponsored uh, which gave them kind of an advantage over the American athletes, because like I said, if you're not really getting paid, and I wouldn't say it was like the Russians were getting paid so much as it was like, a, but it was just a state-sponsored activity, so they were kind of getting subsidized, I guess, uh, to put it plainly. Uh, during this time, Jenner would train at the San Jose City College and also San Jose State University, and he won the James E. Sullivan Award as the top amateur athlete in the United States. Jenner was named the Associated Press Male Athlete of the Year in 1976, and the next year, he made that famous appearance on the Wheaties box. So in 1977, Jenner becomes the spokesperson for Wheaties, which is just a god awful cereal. I don't know why people. It's cool that people, because like I grew up and I, I love cereal. Obviously, as a kid growing up, and you go to the store and you like, you know, I love sports too. So you see cereal that's got your favorite sports people on it, and I'm like, Mom, give me this. I want to get this, and you know, she buys it for me, and I get it home, and I'm like, ugh, what? Ew, Wheaties is we, Wheaties are disgusting. I'm sorry if if I'm, you know, triggering some people out there. I don't know, if, you know, making you mad. If there's a Wheaties, um, you know, support group or something you might need to seek out. But that stuff's not good, guys. Just want to say, well, I'm getting off a tangent here on a tangent about how bad the cereal is. But it was really cool that he made the front of the box. And so I guess he would he would be on there. So I didn't realize. I guess it's, it was different back then. I'm kind of reading how it went. Uh, it looks like he was the. I don't know if he's the second person to be on the Wheaties box. It says basically there was a guy named Bob Richards who was on there, and then. And then uh, Jenner had it for a while, and then someone named Mary Lou Retton, she got it after him. It almost seems like a, like, a, like a campaign. I feel like now they just put him on there. Like, oh, this person had a great year or great, you know, whatever. They're going to put him on the Wheaties box. It said that Jenner actually liked the Wheaties, so he and I, and he or she and I have to have different things in common. Uh, that they ate the, said that they ate the breakfast cereal two to three times a week. Still likes it, evident, evidently, from what I'm seeing now. Uh, Jenner would actually even have a short stint as a race car driver. I feel like that is something that is little little known. I didn't know that um, at all until I did until I did this research. This 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 guy was like all about like all just the you know kind of extreme like different kind of sports like running and and, and, and race car driving. It's pretty, it's pretty cool though. But he raced in the IMSA Camel GT series in the eighties. Uh, got his first victory in eighty six after doing the twelve hours in a Sebring in the also in the IMSA is it IMSA? I want to say IMSA. Uh, GTO class racing in the 7-Eleven Roush Racing Ford Mustang. Whoa, that's a lot of words to say. Uh, with Scott Pruitt. He almost raced in NASCAR in 1980. Actually, they said he was uh, in talks to race in the Winston Cup Series in the number 88 car, but he ended up losing out to Ricky Rudd. That guy's got one of the coolest names ever. And then, uh, yeah, so now we're going to jump to, I guess, what is the most salacious part or interesting part of this guy's career. He would end up going on to become a woman. Bruce Jenner would become... Caitlyn Jenner, and that I think threw us all for a loop about ten years ago. 
Uh, I, I, I will say, because I, I I've seen the Kardashians and seen them, a, a number of their episodes and even all the other different shows that they've had, different iterations of them. Um, you could see early on there was something happening. There was something different. You kind of looked at him and you're like, why is his hair so long? Why does it look like he might be wearing makeup even when he was still Bruce Jenner? So it was definitely it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an overnight thing. And anybody who kind of knew him probably, as we'll find out, was already aware that this was kind of happening. So even, even before Bruce Jenner became an Olympic champion, his first wife, uh, Christy Scott said he told her early on during their marriage that he was struggling between or stru- struggling with being a transgender and wanting to be, quote unquote, a woman. Um, she said it was such, such a shock to me, but that he opened up his heart and confessed. Uh, so he so he you know he told her he had he had to share this deep dark secret. And he told me he always wanted to be a woman, and she says understandably I was speechless. I didn't really know what to say. I'm not sure that I would know what to say either. They, they, and of course they got married in '72. Um, she was there through all of that big de- decathlon, Wheaties, box, love, all that stuff that they were getting. And he ended up he ended up telling I think all of his wives because um, even they were, you know he told Chris Jenner about the fact that he would wanted to be a woman and he tried women's clothes on and stuff like that. And I don't know it, it's um I, I I find that to be I don't the nominees is not my soapbox to talk about. I just, I, I just don't I've never been in that position so I can't really say you know what I mean as far as like knowing that I'm not in the right body or feeling that I'm not in the right body couldn't imagine it because um, I've just never I've never had to go through it so huh you know that just a, I'm always just left a little bit confused but yeah I mean that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much her in a nutshell um, of course we all know like I said the, the, the Kardashian fame and all that stuff um, she would end up I guess coming out fully as a woman i think in like 2015 like officially ish no yeah something like that yeah yeah and then now it's just been been living as caitlin jenner i feel like now it feels like her her views and her her takes are more uh salacious than the idea that she became a woman i'm sure people some people will probably feel differently but but yeah that's caitlin jenner All right, hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Bite Size Bios, number 28 here about Caitlyn Jenner. Um, I never knew that much about Bruce Jenner, really, until um, the Cole Kardashian fame kind of happened, so I had to kind of go back and learn about him. But I can, really, I, can under- I can understand how it may have been hard for people to, to come to grips with the fact that they're, that you know Bruce became Caitlyn. I mean, it's, it's similar to like if LeBron became like Latasha or something, you know? It would be. It would take a second. It would. It wouldn't. Doesn't mean you know that we're I, that I'm a like a hater or, or don't believe we should have equal rights. But it would take a second. So, but you know, interesting story. Uh, there's always you know more you can find out about her. You'll see the extras about this on uh, httappen.com. Uh, give us a like and subscribe wherever you find this. Uh, five stars if you like it. Two stars if you didn't like it. Tell us why you didn't like it because constructive criticism is always. Welcome. Uh, I don't think there's much else to say. I do appreciate appreciate you guys coming back week to week and pressing play. Um, Yeah, so we'll see you next week with the next How Did That Happen?